Let's talk about tracking down memory leaks with instruments and Xcode. This is QCAM devlog number two. I'm Michael Forrest recording this with my own app. So yesterday I used Apple Instruments, a profiling tool that comes with Xcode to figure out why my app was crashing on older iPads. So Video Pencil is an app that lets you draw on Zoom. So this is, I'm using it right now. So we can just um, draw like that and it connects to the computer um, so that you can use a virtual camera. And then some people use it with QCAM, you know, that's the best way to do it. But you can also use it with other apps like Ecamm Live using a technology called NDI. And uh, that just basically lets you make a virtual camera so that you can um, you, you can sort of work with uh, QCAM that way. Um, with Video Pencil, so sorry, the iPad app. So we, I got a bug report, uh, well, recently. I've, I've had, this has been around for a while, but the, the, it was quite hard to reproduce, uh, basically. So, so Matt was having an issue here where um, uh, he was like on Zoom and it was crashing after a while when he was drawing, essentially. And he sort of goes into the symptoms of that here, which is it shuts down and there's a ghost image left behind. And then when he comes back, it's gone, which basically means it crashed on the iPad and it just wasn't sending anything. Um, so I'd actually heard this from someone else as well and asked him what iPad he was using and that was actually a 6th gen and then it was sort of encouraging to see that he, or Matt also had a, had a slightly older iPad there. So um, we, we sort of, uh, I, I kind of did what I often do in this situation and ordered myself a used iPad 6th gen from Back Market, which is a nice place to get uh, Apple products for testing on and they have a good uh, returns policy. Um, so, it was, but it actually took me a while to test this because I'm working on QCAM all day and these things are kind of like fighting with each other sometimes. So, but yesterday morning I had a bit of time to, to try some stuff out. So actually like on the older iPad, I actually managed to make it crash by just drawing and zooming and, and sort of doing a lot of this kind of stuff and I managed to make it crash. Um, and yeah, sure enough, it turned out to be a memory leak. I could see it was going from like 200 megabytes up to like a gigabyte and then crashing. And actually you can see in Xcode, like here's, the, here's that sort of red line of the, of the hard hard memory limit. And basically your app's gonna get quit if it, if it exceeds that, um, alloc that, um, that, that allocation. I wanted to say allocation, because, but it means a different thing in this context, but you know what I mean. Um, so I actually managed to reproduce it, which is always the hardest part. Um, and it was a, it was, I, you know, I've sort of tested a bit more since and it doesn't happen on the newer iPads. It doesn't happen on the older OS in the same way. So it was like some combination of this newer iPad and, and the, uh, this older iPad and the newer OS was, was causing some unexpected behavior. Um, so actually like with instruments, really the goal here is to find out which line of my code is racking up all this memory and instruments is uh, is good, but it's pretty useless until you turn on malloc stack logging. I would love if my key was a little bit better, but um, uh, I have, I am, this is a devlog, we don't have to overproduce, but basically we've got malloc stack logging there. So I usually turn it off when I'm not using it because it does add a little bit of uh, lag to everything. Uh, makes takes longer to start up and stuff and sometimes you're transferring sing symbols, but um, yeah, basically, um, yeah, that's what you want to turn on. And then that's, when you're using the memory graph explorer or instruments, you're going to be able to see what line of code in the backtrace. So here I just, you know, I did myself a, a little leaks. Usually I kind of build my own stacks of instruments, but for this it was like, okay, we're just looking at allocations really. Um, and just something else I find quite useful is this uh, like profile in instruments button, um, which, um, sorry, which lives up here. Um, which lets you, um, which is a really sort of handy way to not have to rebuild the app to kind of like test, uh, to profile it in instruments. But I also just uh, tend to have uh, build configurations. So you see we're on profile, uh, that's the profiling thing that launches instruments when you do command I in Xcode. But I have this build configuration set to debug because it just saves, because otherwise it will like rebuild it in release to do the profiling, which I guess the idea is like, if you're really optimizing your code, then you want to test it in its sort of maximum optimization. But to be honest, I never really need that. Although that's not to say that it's never happened. Last year, I actually had a bug that was only present in the release build and it appeared when the new iOS launched while I was supposed to be taking a break. So I ended up doing a bit of an emergency group call in a hotel room and um, trying to figure out what, that, what was going on. Uh, but yeah, so once in a while it does happen, but most of the time, I think it's pretty safe to be in debug when you're just trying to figure out like, oh, what have I done? 
Anyway, the idea is now we can dig in with with instruments. So if I if we I think I'm, this is actually um, live instruments. So I've sort of tried to recreate the conditions <laughs> yesterday. So we can sort of you sort of have a look here. Basically, you sort this by I don't know like sort it by something up here essentially. And I'm sort of like looking at I'm just looking at persistent because I wasn't I didn't actually see much in the way of leaks. So up here you might you might see. Um, you might see kind of evidence of a leak up here, but I, I usually find that's pretty, I don't usually find it that useful, the information it gives. So in here, I was just poking around, but what we can do here is we can sort of poke into, let's say, okay, that's quite a lot of memory, 600 megabytes. Um, uh, so let's have a look in there. So you sort of click this little arrow here. There's this tiny little arrow that appears when you hover over it. And that gives you, um, this is the useful stuff. So, and this, this over here, you can see sort of what, what you want to know really, um, is, um, here's, here's the stack trace for, um, for what happened there when that memory was allocated. And, and these, these, these aren't necessarily bad allocations. It's just, I kind of knew that it wasn't necessarily registering as a leak. So I kind of had a look through and, and you see, I've got this folded onto, onto my own co code. So I can sort of like click on there and if you're basically if you're lucky when you double click on that half the time it doesn't work but um, yeah here we go in this particular situation we have managed to uh, not that, that one it's kind of hard to get hard to get it to show you the lines of code I'm trying to show I thought this one did it but I guess not um, it will show you the um, how much memory was allocated on each line I, I'm, I, I, I really thought this was doing it, but it gets it gets confused as well, depending on what device you're looking at. So you've got it, it's quite like fragile, as you can see, but luckily I took screenshots so we can see. Um, I, I found this uh, line of code here that was like, had allocated 437 megabytes of, code, of, of memory. And I'm like, that seems like about the right amount of memory that I'm looking for. So I kind of have a look and I see that um, it's, uh, okay, we're doing something here, but then, uh, you know, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like I knew I was doing something bad there and uh, yeah, put myself a big note. So, you know, I, you know, I, I sometimes uh, I'm kind of, it's late in the evening. I'm like, I'm just going to quickly do this and leave a note for myself. And then when later on there's a bug, I will discover that, uh, okay, yes, I knew I was doing something bad. So I definitely know I'm in the right place to make this fix. Um, and sure enough, yes, I will. So let's have a look at look at that function quickly. Um, and we don't have to go too much into this, but what, what I was doing was um, relying on, um, I was just like going, I was using, so texture loader is MTK texture loader. I'm sort of doing a bit of metal stuff here um, just to, you know, just to like, uh, basically I composite video pencil with, with a stack of metal textures. I sort of render them on one, one above the other. But what you can see here is, um, we are, I'm just doing like metal texture loader, new texture every time. So basically the, the drawings, they, um, once you finish drawing, you can get, uh, you can then get it as like a, an NS image, a UI image, basically a CG image is what you're going to get. Uh, yeah, which I never really trust in terms of optimization, but like, you know, instead of what I should have been doing here was uh, just like drawing a drawing it into one texture. But what I was doing was like spawning a load of textures every time. So basically the GPU has like a limit of how many textures it can have, but like newer devices will have a much higher limit. So I was kind of getting away with it. And also if you're not doing that much drawing, you're not going to notice it. But each time you kind of finish a stroke, it was like, allocating a new texture, which is pretty bad. Um, so yeah, what, what did I do? I just, um, you know, if you, if you are interested, uh, like I don't, I usually would do like um, copy texture. I usually sort of do a bit, you know, manage my own pixel buffers and, and sort of like draw, where's the uh, copy texture? You know, I've got like my little things. So I'll kind of get my pixel buffer pool and I'll allocate the texture and I'll, and then I'll do this little uh, blit encoder thing. But I'm trying to learn to trust core image a bit more. So in this case, I actually, if we just uh, revert to main, git checkout main, uh, we should see, um, this is kind of, oh, did I not delete? <laughs> I could probably delete this. <laughs> right. Um, so see, instead, I'm, I'm actually like creating that texture. This will get to another time. Uh, once I move to Swift 6, I'm going to have to start dealing, dealing with these uh, main actor isolated things. 
But um, you see actually like this, I've set as a non-isolated unsafe just to sort of avoid some warnings. But um, yeah, I, I just create that pencil texture once now and then I'm using core image to um, render that, that image into the texture and just kind of trusting it. And it says basically, um, you know, you can render that in, you give it a context. The core, the rendering context has to be created with um, uh, with a metal device, basically. So I think there's a lot of like stuff going on inside core image that works differently depending on if you're using like yeah UI kit or if you're doing like metal stuff or IO surface stuff or like um, AV yeah, like um, uh, pixel buffers, CV pixel buffers. It's sort of it's all a bit strange and mysterious sometimes. So I tend to sort of do things by hand a bit. But in this case, I thought let's do it. So I actually shipped. Um, I actually shipped this on text flight on test flight yesterday, and then as I was recording this devlog yesterday, I noticed that we were getting quite an interesting. Uh, it was like it was kind of like doing that kind of like mirrored thing, and I was like, oh god, they've probably got different coordinate systems. And sure enough, like it turns out, when I actually inspected this core image, it 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 dis it decided it was going to rotate it and flip it for me. So I've had to like rotate it and flip it back so that it's in the right coordinate system again. So thankfully that was picked up straight away on Discord. So I was happy with that. But yeah, so, but the fact is a combination of um, instruments helping me kind of like spot the heavier allocation lines of code. If you kind of like jump through, <laughs> if the stars happen to align, it works well. Um, but often it doesn't work at all. Um, but when, when it does, and then in a combination of that, me kind of having written a note to my future self and just instantly spotting that and going, ah, okay, yes, that would be the problem. I was able to fix that very quickly. So anyway, hopefully I've helped you avoid watching this talk again. Hopefully Hello, and welcome to Analyze Heat Memory. That's Ben. And that's Daniel. Today, we're going to talk about heat memory. <laughs> like, I, I didn't want to watch it again. Sorry, guys, but you know. Like it's a memory management talk. Calm down. Right. Um, hopefully, ho yeah, hopefully that's helped. So I I'll see you soon. Feel free to try my apps that I've used today. That's QCAM Presenter, which I used to record all this and connected to the iPad. And Video Pencil is the one that uh, is on the iPad that I was just talking about. Thank you. And I'll see you hopefully tomorrow or the next day.